This is our Datsun 620. It is KA24DE swapped. It's a 240SX motor. Today we're doing a brake upgrade on this car. We're doing a front disc brake upgrade using a disc brake kit from Silvermine. The mix of parts that are included in the kit. You've got two rotors, you've got two calipers. It is a two pot setup, uh, which is way better than the drum brakes, but not as crazy as the Willwoods we have on the 510. You have a couple of machined adapters. These are pretty well made. They aren't anodized, nothing super fancy, but good quality machined parts. Um, you've got some braided brake lines. You've got some bolts that are included with it, pads, and then the retainer springs. Um, and that covers everything in the kit. It's nothing super complicated. This kit is 690 bucks from Silvermine. You can find them online. I'll put a link down in the description that you can click on if you're interested in this kit for your 620. They have other kits. They have a Willwood setup that's larger. And just like on the 510, we can't run that setup because we run relatively small wheels. So these are 15 inch Vario Irwins. They're a really, really rare wheel. We've only seen two or three sets in total. Um, and we're lucky enough to have one of them. What's cool about these wheels is you have the really distinct, good looking mesh pattern, but then you have a flat dish. Most mesh wheels have a step up that makes it so that the mesh face is a lot smaller than the diameter of the wheel itself. It's kind of an interesting, unique look and it works really well on this truck. So obviously the first step is to pull your wheel off. Throw your lug nuts at the ground. Eat the lugs. Eat the lug nuts. Perfect. The next step is to remove the drum. On a lot of cars, you'll have to take and insert a, uh, a nut, no, a bolt into this hole and into that hole. And you'll use that to press the drum back. But on this car, you can just pull it off. Super slick. The next step is to remove your two brake shoes. Beautiful. The next step is to pull off this little black cap right here. This can be done with a hammer and a screwdriver. Tap it, give it a little twist. Rotate the wheel. Tap in, twist. Repeat that a few times, then you'll be able to pull it right off with your hand. Once that's off, we'll come in here and we'll unbend this cotter pin. And pull it right out. Slip off the little castle nut cap. And then we'll undo this. It's a 26 millimeter. And we have one right here. Now, go ahead and pull off your uh, hub and set that aside. Next up, you have to undo these four 17 millimeter bolts. You can just do that with an impact and take them right out. You'll be reusing these bolts, so make sure to set them aside in a place that you can uh, get to them again. Also need to undo this little uh, piece in here that connects the brake line to the hard line, the soft rubber line up to the hard line here. And what this takes is a little clip right here that you have to pull out and then undo this 10 millimeter fitting. little C-clip taken off. We can pull the hose off and we can take off the entire backside of the drum assembly. This you'll never need again, so throw it away or sell it to someone who needs it. Or recycle it. Or recycle it. It's a good activity too. So already we have everything pulled off and we're ready to start putting parts on the car. Um, you'll have two of these little billet adapters, one for each side. They're slightly different between the two sides and the difference is is that one goes on the left and one goes on the right. They're a mirror image of one another. And you need to make sure that these two mounting holes are located on the rear of the spindle assembly. Um, once you have that placed on, all you have to do is pick up those bolts you took off a moment ago and use them to attach this piece to the car. You wanna go ahead and take these bolts, tighten them on, and then make sure they're nice and tight with a hand tool um because they are the bolts that hold the brake onto your car and make it so that you can you know stop all 
All right, so now what we need to do is actually grind off a small amount of metal around the outside of this spindle assembly. And the reason being is because it's slightly too large to fit inside of the rotor, the new rotor. So you have to just take it, and we use a bench grinder, take off a small amount of material around the outside here, and then it'll fit just fine into your rotor. We'll show you that process now. I'd strongly recommend before you grind these to uh, put some tape over the ends. Put a piece there, take another piece and cross it over. And the reason being is because these are your wheel bearings. And if you get a bunch of metal in there, it'll grind away at the bearings and the wheel bearings and it'll potentially destroy your spindle. Um, so you don't want all the little metal chunks from grinding to get into there. So just tape up each side, super easy, really quick to do, and it'll save you a lot of potential headache. To illustrate why we have to grind down the material on the outside of this, I'll go ahead and place it into the new rotor. There we go. You can see that around the outside right here where my, my finger is pointing, it rubs up against it. You don't have to take off very much material, but it's enough for the, uh, the spindle hub assembly to be able to go flush into the rotor. We're just using a bench grinder for this and doing it by hand. You don't have to worry a ton about the weight balance being off as long as you're careful. If you don't have a bench grinder like this one, you can probably do it just fine with a handheld angle grinder. But you can see with just a small amount removed, we're able to insert it right into the rotor and it fits it's in perfect. Now that we have this ground down, we can put it back onto the spindle. Slide it right back on. You may need to re-grease this. If it needs to be re-greased, make sure you put oodles of grease in there and get it all good. Ours were re-greased somewhat recently, so we're fine. And then when tightening down these little wheel hub nuts, they are a tensioning nut. So it needs to uh, be tight enough to hold the wheel on, make sure it spins well and doesn't have any inwards and outwards movement like that, or any side to side movement but you don't want it so tight that it binds up the bearings. So get it nice and tight, feel how it moves, feel if it's like in and out, um, and, and get some tension on it, but, but not very much. There you go, it should have a small amount of resistance, but nothing crazy. Once you have your spindle nut tensioned, go ahead and grab the little castle nut cap thing, put that back on, take a new cotter pin or the old cotter pin if it's not too damaged, and put it through the hole in the center of the spindle, and then, Go ahead and rebend it. Now that the cotter pin's rebent, we can go ahead and put back on our center cap. Now that that's on, what we're gonna go ahead and do is assemble the new caliper, put the, the brake pads into the caliper. Assembling the caliper is pretty easy. All we need to do is install the brake pads with the retainer clips and put on the new braided brake line. So a tip for assembling these little brake caliper assemblies when you're putting the pads in, they are exactly identical to the D21 brake calipers, so you may be able to find a good resource out there on how to put the pads into that caliper. Um, the way I recommend it is put in the little retainer clips first, place them into the caliper assembly, and then put the pads in. Kit includes some brake line hardware, and these pair with the brake line in a pretty intuitive way. You'll put one of the copper washers onto the nut, put that through the brake line, and then put the other copper washer through the nut. We found that it may be necessary once it's in the car to adjust it slightly angle-wise to figure out, you know, how is it going to best attach to the component in the car, to the, the hard line in the car, so it isn't rubbing up against any parts. Leave this slightly loose so you can adjust it once it's in the car, but it is easier if you put this at least onto the caliper assembly while it's outside of the car, so you don't have to worry about doing that while you're just sitting underneath in the fender well. Now that we have this all assembled, we can grab the little pieces of hardware that we need. These are just two bolts that attach the uh, brake caliper to the aluminum adapter plate, and we can put this into the car. So I'm back here over at the car. I've got the rotor, I've got the caliper assembly. First thing we're gonna do is put the rotor onto the hub. It's pretty easy. It just slots right over your existing six lug holes. And then we're gonna take the caliper and slide it over the back side of the rotor. Line up perfectly with the bill of aluminum adapter plate in the back there, and you'll take these two bolts that they've supplied to put in. To make this slightly easier, I put on a couple lug nuts to hold the rotor flat so that the caliper isn't being twisted outwards as the rotor swings away from the, the hub. This makes it easier to put the bolts that go on the back on. Once you've installed the bolts in the back, make sure to tighten them by hand, get them nice and tight. They are obviously the bolts that hold the caliper onto the car, and if that falls off, you won't be able to stop. It's not very safe if they aren't tight. 
The last thing is just attaching the braided brake line to the hard line fitting that already exists on the car. This is pretty easy to do, though I will note that the um, clip that holds the new braided line in is kind of tight, so you have to tap it in with a hammer. It can be a little bit of a pain to slot in, but it's not terrible. And uh, you could potentially use the old clip, but they've provided nice new clips, so that's what we're gonna use instead. Before you completely tighten down either this end of the braided line or the inside end of the braided line, make sure you have the cable in such a way that it's not going to rub on anything in the suspension or get caught between any two moving suspension components. The final thing we need to do before this car is ready to drive again is bleed the entire brake system. So we bled the system with our trusty little Mighty Vac. You can see how nasty the old fluid was. It definitely needed to be bled. Now that the system is bled, we're gonna throw the wheels back on, go take it for a spin, and see how the car feels. In this brake upgrade, it's gonna make it a totally different vehicle. It's basically a D21 now. It is. Got the K24 power plant, you got the D21 front brakes, still got drums in the rear. It's basically just an older, cooler, lower D21. It feels so much better. It feels much more in control with the power that it has. Sweet. I love uh, it. That was a great upgrade. I'm glad we did that. What a cool truck. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you now know how to upgrade the brakes on your Datsun 620. And if you just watch this because the truck is cool, well, I hope you have uh, had an opportunity to appreciate how rad this 620 is. Datsuns are rad. Have a good day. See you in the next video.